Hello traders, it is Tuesday evening, September 17th, and it's time for my weekly video. We're going to find some great trades tonight. The market's been kind of slow because we're waiting for the FOMC statement tomorrow, Wednesday. It'll be released at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Everyone's expecting the Fed to lower interest rates by a quarter of a point, but it's the rhetoric that follows that will determine where the market goes. We're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. First, I'd like to mention that everything you're going to see tonight is available on Option Stalker. That's the platform that we use to conduct these searches. And I do these webinars or these videos every Wednesday night. I try to find stocks that are appropriate for swing trading that set up well for the next two, three, four days. And if you're watching these videos after they've been posted to YouTube a week later, Please make sure to give them a thumbs up if you like them. Please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because at least once a month I'm going to be posting live videos, meaning that you'll be able to watch along with my members and take action on these picks the very next morning. And I also plan on doing a lot more videos, perhaps as many as one per day. So that'll give me lots of opportunities to post these videos earlier instead of waiting a week and it'll also allow me to do more of the live events so please make sure to subscribe give the videos a thumbs up and let's get going with our analysis again everything's available at www.oneoption.com option stalker is the platform so here's the market really hasn't done much in the last week you see that we had one decent update, doji, pretty much doji, very, very quiet trading. Look at this volume, horrible, horrible volume. I'm going to do a volume overlay, and that will show us the average daily volume. Look at this. Out of the last 20 days, there have been one, two, three days out of the last 20 trading days have had average or better volume. This is a very low probability trading environment. So that's a problem. That should pick up tomorrow after the FOMC statement. Here's another problem. You can see how the market is butting up against this resistance level at the all-time high. Tried it once, tried it twice. Today, had a nice little close. We're still a distance away from that all-time high. 302 on the SPY is what it's trying to get through. Just doesn't ha seem to have a lot of firepower. Will a quarter point rate cut do it tomorrow? Probably not. That's already priced into the market. I believe we're going to see a pullback after the FOMC statement because the Fed officials are currently divided. Some feel that we should do two rate cuts in addition to the one tomorrow. Some feel that we shouldn't even do the rate cut tomorrow. Personally, I feel that domestic economic growth is plenty strong enough to give the Fed some breathing room. They don't need to hit the panic button. They should keep their powder dry, unlike the ECB, which is painted into a corner. It's already at negative interest rates. They have no bullets left. So hopefully the Fed will not ease the rest of the year. Now, the market won't like that kind of news initially, but I feel that everything else is intact for it to rally into year-end. I do like this breakout right here, which is SPY 294. I feel, excuse me, this level is 297 right here. This is the 294 level that it broke out from. So this will be first support at SPY 297. Then we have secondary support at SPY 294. I would like to try and buy around that 294 level on an FOMC pullback, knowing that I've got support right here at the 100 day moving average, which is right around the 292 level. So at 294, I'm only risking about 20 S&P points, not too much on the downside. And I feel that we will be able to find support at that level. So I would not take any swing trade positions before the FOMC statement tomorrow, but I would be looking for a pullback to buy on. 
For those of you who are very nimble swing traders, I'm going to give you some bearish picks today as well. So the caveat for taking bearish picks will be, I'm going to put an alert line here. We want to get through this price right here, which is 299.50. That's the low from Monday. We need to penetrate that before we can start taking bearish positions. There's a small uptrend line here, pretty steep one that it's broken down through, so I don't pay it an incredible amount of attention to that. We're going to overlay the 20 and 50 day moving averages just to get a feel for where they are. They're converging right here at that 294 level, which is another reason that I like buying right in here. Got these two support levels here. You got this one here. I think we're going to be able to find our footing with global interest rates near historic lows. There's always going to be a bid to the market as long as credit concerns remain minimal, which they currently are. So we need to be below this level right here in order to consider any of the short positions that we're going to be highlighting today. Ideally, you're a longer term swing trader. We're going to be waiting for that pullback. We'd like to see this gap right here fill in, like to see the volume pick up, and we'd like to see that support level hold. If it does, that'll provide us with a great entry point for the longs that we're going to find today. So those are your market marching orders. Market first, market first, market first. I cannot stress that enough. Very low volume conditions. We have an FOMC statement coming up Wednesday. We have quadruple witching, which adds to market volatility on Friday. So swing traders, play it safe. Really try and watch for a pullback and support at this 294 level and focus on the longs that we're going to be finding today. So let's see how we did last week. First of all, if we take a look at the market, it really didn't do a whole lot in the last week. Very, very light volume. Apple was one of the candidates. You can see here it ran up. We're pretty much where we were when the video came out uh, last week. So uh, did not want to buy this big bar here, wanted to buy halfway up. We got a chance to do that right in here, and we're about the same level. So really nothing there. This is a loser. We had this big breakout, this big bar here, really big volume, and now AIMT has pulled back. We wanted to try and buy it halfway up this bar, which we were able to do the next day. You can see how it closed right at that midway point, actually engulfed at one point this whole bar. So a uh, little bit soft on that breakout, and then this is where you get stopped out. We did not want to see that breakout right here, that open fail. But now we're below the breakout itself. So right now you'd have to be on the sidelines on this one. We would have taken a loss on this trade, no question about it. And this support level at 200 might be okay if the stock can find support here, tick, 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 higher. Then we get back through this horizontal resistance level right here at 2250. Then I might be willing, as long as it's still got good volume, to see if it can recover and move higher. That was a loser. This stock CTL, pretty much right where we got in. So it's right at that 200 day moving average, good volume. I like it right here. I like this horizontal breakout. I like the fact that the stock has been able to hold that little gap right there. So this 200 day moving average is providing support. I like CTL here. Didn't really go up or down, but I like it. D-O-C-U, really nice. You can see the big, big runs up, but the stock runs up to its high of the day, opens lower. Runs up to the high of the day, opens lower. So that's a pattern. We've seen a little bit of a pullback in it, but this is a very strong stock and a nice breakout. So this is a nice trade. This is a winner. M, Macy's. So here we go. We get this big breakout right here. The next day, 
falls below that breakout right in here and that's a sign of trouble so this one you want to be out of this would have been a small loser we wanted to see that opening price right there hold it did not Oracle I have to apologize for because when I did the video I didn't realize that that night they had announced earnings after the close they did it before the earnings announcement was supposed to be released and had I known that I do not trade before earnings and hold over the number so you can see the earnings came out after the close the reaction was negative so uh, that one you should have avoided the next morning when the stock opened much lower and absolutely once it was through that 100 day moving average it was a really nice short after the number it was below the major moving average gap down after the number and it's been falling since now it's resting on the 200 day moving average pretty good support level in here but nothing to tell me that I need to be in this stock especially with a negative earnings reaction Tesla pretty much held its own during the course of the week I do like it staying above these major moving averages here it wants to fill in this gap right here and it still may but the markets doing nothing it hasn't had enough impetus on its own to advance so Tesla looks okay on a market pullback after the FOMC statement if the stock is able to hold its own that's a good sign that's relative strength then Tesla comes back into play along with some of these others Apple CTL DOCU those would all be good candidates but let's focus on new candidates and this is custom search all I did was click custom search this is a binary search engine you can customize it to any time frame we are swing traders in this video so I'm going to be using the D1 M uh, H4 and H2 time frames two hour four hour daily so the first thing I want to look for is very good option liquidity let's use a three here a three or better these will be liquid options and let's look for a stock that's above the prior day high and let's look for heavy volume in a very low volume market I want to make sure I've got heavy volume on the stock because I can't count on a market tailwind so I dang well better have a lot of buyers or a lot of sellers in there to provide momentum for the underlying stock quite a few candidates for us to knock through I'm gonna see if I can limit that a little bit and I'm going to mark that the stock is strong relative to the SPY on a D1 basis and now this is a much smaller list let's go through I don't need a ton of stocks I only need a couple that's all I'm looking for a couple of longs and a couple of shorts into the FOMC statement would suit me well Adobe looks nice in here but it's got to get through major resistance at the 100 day moving average if it were able to do so on a big FOMC number and a good reaction fine but not going to make the list AIG looks good horizontal resistance right up here needs to get through that before we can consider it DBX we've got this little 50 day moving average in the way here I'm going to take that off because it's not as significant as some of the others that I watch so not on a longer term basis pretty nice price action here but not what I'm looking for FSL or excuse me EWW is a uh, ETF this is a Mexico ETF I like this compression right here I like this breakout through the major moving averages it's still got a little ways to go to get up to this $45 level so I like this actually I'm not crazy about buying ETFs because I think we can do better finding individual stocks this might be because they're expecting a US MCA agreement so for right now I'm not putting it on the list FSLR has been running along with some other solar stocks because of the oil price spike GIS nothing there choppy choppy gold GOLD 
Nice compression, good bounce, trying to get through right here. You can see how strong that trend has been. It's probably not a bad candidate with nice support right here at the 1720 level. But I'm going to keep clicking down to see if I can find something I like better. Bouncing off the 200-day moving average, choppy stock. No thank you. No thank you. Just going to keep going through. So this is not bad. This is Nugget. This is a two times ETF. If you are a premium seller, I like what I see in this regard. Strong trend, pullback, support above the 100-day moving average. You'd be able to sell a bullish put spread using that $27 strike price. I like it. If the stock drops below that $27 level, you have to buy that put spread back in. Do I want to do that ahead of the FOMC? Gold has a tendency to move pretty well on the FOMC statement, so I would wait until afterwards. This is SIRI. I like this. I like this. And I'm going to put up the 10SI indicator that shows relative strength, so you can see a number above zero indicates relative strength. Here's what I like. I like the fact that the stock gapped through this resistance level. I like the fact that the stock came back and it tested that support level now. It used to be resistance, now it's support. I like the fact that the stock rallied today. I think this is a good entry point for it, and that 636 level would be the stop out point. So we want to see the open from today, which is 635. We want to see that open hold because that is our prior resistance. So yes, I like SIRI, a little bit of a choppy stock, but I think that uh, it's going to be able to hold its own. If you can try and buy it at the 642 level, it's a $6 stock. It's not going to move dramatically, but if you can make 15 cents on it, that's a nice move on a $6 stock. Snapchat. This is nice. You draw your downtrend line right here. You can see it's been able to find support. Did not quite get down to the 100-day moving average, and it bounced, so it's been able to move higher. It's had a general trend higher. You can see how it's just gained relative strength here recently, and it's above zero. So I like it. I'd like to see a little bit more volume. So there's not a lot of volume in this stock. My first inclination would be to see if there's any kind of premium available at that 1450 strike price, right at that 100-day moving average, to try and sell an out-of-the-money put. But this is not bad, and it's starting to move higher, and it had pretty good price action today. We're going to still keep taking a look to see if there's anything we can find that's better. SPWR, I like this chart. This is another solar stock. I'm going to confirm that. Yes, solar stock. And you can see this nice downtrend right here that's been broken to the upside. You can also see that after the earnings announcement, the stock gapped higher. It came back. It tested that breakout, and that breakout has held. I like this stock. Good relative strength, good volume. SPWR on any kind of pullback, I like it. Solar stocks may do well with energy prices spiking for the next couple of months. That Iranian bombing of Saudi Arabia uh, is temporary, so that disruption will run its course. But for right now, for a short-term swing trade, looks good. VLO, too much resistance overhead. Nice support here below. Seems to be bouncing off of it. This is nice. I like the fact that this stock has found support here. I like the nice grind higher. I like the relative strength. I like the good volume recently. It has to get through this 100-day moving average. So we're going to click GTC, and we're going to drop an alert right at the high of the day from today. If that stock gets through that high of the day, I want to know about it. And that's what we do using the platform is that alert will pop up. At very least, there should be a good day trade for me there. Here's a nice looking potential candidate. I would not call this a good swing trade because we don't want to catch a falling knife. 
after earnings after the close, huge gap down, bullish hammer, found support here, trying to get into the gap. I'm going to place a GTC alert at the high of the day. If it starts getting into this gap, it could fill. It may not fill all the way, but it could have good momentum for a few days while buyers come in and scoop this stock. But it's one of these deals where I would not go in and hold this long term. I'd go in and buy it above here, and I'd put my stop right there on a closing basis because we want to see this level hold firm. So we've only got a couple of bullish stocks, but that's okay. I'm looking for a market pullback, and the video that I do next week will be more important from a bullish standpoint. So let's see if we can find some bearish stocks. I'm going to be looking for, well, first of all, let's look for something with relative weakness versus the SPY and heavy volume and good option liquidity. And we've got a fair list to choose from. So let's go in and take a look at what we've got here. Again, these stocks all had heavy volume, so I'm just going to be click, click, clicking through for my bearish picks. Airlines, very oil dependent. Higher oil prices equal higher gas prices equal lower prices for airlines. Again, temporary disruption, but temporary cost increases for airlines. That's why they're pulling back. Not too crazy about that. I'm going to keep going right down the list. I'm going to just keep clicking on these. We already looked at AIMT, not crazy about that for a short. BHC, uh, spike up, tried to get through resistance, wasn't able to hold that below the major moving average. is a little bit too choppy for me, so I'm not crazy about that. Don't see anything there from a shorting standpoint I like. Just going to keep going on until I see something I like. General Motors. Got a big gap down here through the support level, but it bounces back up through it. It would need to be below this support level, these two major moving averages, for me to have interest in it. This is a little bit more interesting. This is Nordstrom, and you can see after the close, nice bounce, nice rally. Then all of a sudden, a big drop, and it's below this 100-day moving average. Here's how I would trade this. You can see the uptrend line right here that's now been breached. I would be inclined to watch it tomorrow morning, and if the FOMC reaction is negative, I believe JWM is going to be a good short. Excuse me, N as in Nancy. JWN as in Nancy. And uh, if you are a premium seller, FOMC bearish reaction, I would look to sell a call spread above this 100-day moving average and buy it back if the stock rallies back above it, but expect it to float lower and for that resistance to hold. I like that as a short. This stock rallies off the low, tries to get through this 100-day moving average and fails. Backs right off on heavy volume, so even though it's been strong, relative to the market recently, this is a pretty bearish sign. And this is uh, Kraft Foods. So maybe a decent little call credit spread setting up here around the 2950 level. Use that 100 day moving average as your stop. I don't think I'm going to put this as a short. I'm hoping to find something that really will fall with the market. If the market really did fall, and it fell hard, I think that you would see a rotation into consumer stocks. They are a defensive play, so to speak, and so I think that stock will probably hold up pretty well. So we're not, we're not going to highlight that one. LVS, Las Vegas Sands, rallies through the major moving averages. Nice, strong, powerful move. Runs out of gas. Now it's backed off, and it tried to fall below these major moving averages. This one I would definitely watch. If it starts to pull back negative FOMC, there's definitely a call credit spread right in here, or you can use this strike price. You can even short this stock if it's weak relative to the market. Here you can see it's been pretty strong recently, 
and today it opened much lower and spent the rest day of the day rallying until it closed on the high. So there's still some buyers out there right now. So this is not going to make our list. McDonald's. McDonald's, nice little sell-off here. There we've got some relative weakness, you can see, below zero. It's on that 100-day moving average. I'm going to want to know about this if it breaks below that 100-day moving average. And yes, I think this would set up as a nice short. But again, McDonald's is a little bit more of a safe play if the market starts falling apart. So would prefer to have a tech stock in there somewhere. This is not bad. MET rallies up, pull back. You've got this major moving average, not able to get through. Let's see what we can find. There's got to be something that we can find. MOS, this actually looks pretty decent. Really backs off strongly from that 100-day moving average. And you can see how the stock closed on its low of the day. It's been strong recently, but we want to see it not be able to hold up tomorrow. And if the market sells off, we want to see it leading the way. So MOS may be a good short for us, and we can lean on that 100-day uh, moving average for our stop. Very choppy there. Oil, not much going on there. SHOP, Shopify, that has been a really a pretty weak stock, and here you can see weak relative to the market, heavy volume. All right, this could be the best bearish pick that I see out there. We just need it to go below the 100-day moving average, so I dropped the GTC alert line. That looks pretty dang weak to me, and uh, that so far is the best candidate that I see. Here we've got win rallies up cannot get through these major moving averages not even close you see big tails above the body sign of resistance anytime it even gets close to that and now it's backing off so when actually looks like a pretty decent short as well i'd mentioned some call credit spreads that we're setting up so those are not going to make the uh, cut i hope you noted them because they may be good plays yum uh, pretty much like McDonald's. So there's some rotation out of this sector, and you can see how Yum has pulled back also to the 100-day moving average. If you're looking for a bullish put spread, I like this one, and I kind of leaning towards McDonald's probably setting up for a good one too, right around this 110 level. So you can lean on that 100-day moving average, even though this is a big pullback right here. Look at this strength. That is a big, strong, powerful trend. So it got a little bit ahead of itself. We've seen some rotation out of the sector. It pulls back, but it bounces right off that 100-day moving average. I like this as a uh, bullish put spread. Use that 110 level to sell against. If it falls below that 110 level, you've got to buy it back in. And I would also wait for that FOMC reaction. If the reaction's bullish, I think McDonald's and Yum are going to set up pretty well for bullish put credit spreads. So out of all the stocks that I've taken a look at right now from a bearish standpoint, I'm going to very quickly review some of the bearish picks because I want to make sure I've got the best ones for you. JWN was one. That's backed off nicely. This is a really big down day here. It went from basically 36 to 32. $4 move. Gosh, it's a little bit stretched. I think it's going to continue to be weak. So um, perhaps not the best pick, but I do kind of I do like it. MOS. This one here, we want to see continued weakness. It's below that 100-day moving average. This could be a nice pick. SHOP is one of my favorites. That I really like if it can get below this 100-day moving average. It's had lots of relative weakness and heavy volume, two key ingredients. WYNN, take a 
a look at that. We've got pretty good volume here in the last couple days. Stock backing off, not able to get through that major moving average. So I think this is also going to set up to be a good short on a negative FOMC reaction. So I'm going to give you two longs and two shorts. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a watch list, click create, and I'm going to label this September 17th because the next time that I do a video, we're going to take a look at these stocks. I liked SIRI and I liked, uh, let's see, SPWR on the long side. And I had a couple of others that I really thought were still pretty good. And I'm going to put Apple in there because it held up well from last week. And I believe CTL was another one that also held up quite well. It pulled back to support. So these are all bullish candidates. And then I'm going to put up MOS. I'm going to use SHOP. And I'm going to use WYNN as the short candidates. We're going to save and close. And we're going to go back to the most important chart of all, the SPY. So I'm looking for a market pullback. I like this 294 level. This is ideally where I want to get long. If the market pulls back, we've got quadruple witching. Tomorrow's Wednesday. We're probably going to see selling Thursday. We may see some selling Friday some nervousness into the weekend if things play out the way I see. So Monday and Tuesday, the dust starts to settle. We probably start to find some support at 294. That means when I do my video next week, I'll be able to leverage this support level, really focus on the longs, look for relative strength. How do we find relative strength anyway? I mean, I've got searches that find relative strength, but what's incredibly powerful is when you have a big market pullback and you start running searches to find out which stocks have been moving, moving, moving higher. Those stocks are going higher when the market is moving lower. That is relative strength. That is a huge edge for individual investors. That's what I preach. That's what we're trying to find. So on a market pullback, it becomes blatantly obvious to us which stocks want to move higher Next Wednesday, I really want to focus on bullish picks. If, by chance, the market grinds higher, you've got some stocks that you can look at, but I'm a little bit leery buying the market at an all-time high after a Fed rate cut. Asset managers are not worried that they're going to miss the next big rally when the market's trading at the all-time high and when stock valuations are at the upper end of their range at a forward PE of 17. So I don't think we're going to see a gangbuster breakout tomorrow. If we do, you've got four stocks to look at and you would buy them on a market breakout and a close above SPY 292. The shorts will come into play if we fall below this level right here. The low from Monday. So FOMC reaction, we take out the low from Monday, then you start looking at the bearish picks. You start looking at shop, start looking at win, start looking at MOS for your opportunities on the short side. That's this week's video. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. I promise I'm going to be releasing more live content on my YouTube channel, so please make sure to subscribe. If you do, you're going to be able to watch these videos and take action on some of the picks that I highlight. Thank you.